thank you very much. Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for organization to give me opportunity to present. My talk is about endoscopic resection or management of IBD dysplasia. So more than 40 years uh, passed since the surveillance started. The trend is now the incidence of colorectal cancer in colitis has decreased, whereas the incidence of dysplasia has increased. This is mainly due to the tighter control of inflammation control and also the technical advan uh, advancement in endoscopy, which enable us to see the dysplasia at the early earliest point, and also we can provide the management at the earliest point. So how we are going to survey uh, colitis bowel? Now we have got a consensus chromoendoscopy and targeted biopsy is a way to go to detect the dysplasia efficiently and precisely. So I just want to show a case um, you can see on the left down corner. This, this case, uh, left, left hand side is white light images and then after display, you can see a bit large nodule can be seen uh, with the background of granular mucosa. Actually, this was cancer. So once dysplasia is detected, what we should do as an endoscopist? Don't call just down. What we need to do is describe dysplasia using Paris classification. And especially we have to assess the lesion if there is an ulcer or not, or if the lesion has clear demarcation line or not. By this, we are assess assessing endoscopic resectability. Here uh, is a case, young gentleman with PSC uh, attended for surveillance colonoscopy. In the CECAM, uh, this is digital chromoendoscopy. It is called TXI mode. You can see a 2A region, slight, slightly elevated area. I'm trying to see if there is a demarcation line, but I couldn't trace between normal mucosa, or lesions. And biopsy showed high grade dysplasia, so this is not indicated. And this patient also has got another lesion at hepatic flexure. Again, we probably call 2A lesion, flat elevated lesion. So NBI is applied to assess the surface pattern, vessel patterns in detail. There is no uh, suspected invasive. Uh, patterns, again, trying to denilate the lesion from background. This is after spring of endocarmine. So let's focus on the 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Simply, we just can't draw the line between normal mucosa, not inflamed mucosa and lesions. So these lesions are out of indication of endoscopic resection. So not only the lesion, but also we have to uh, think about patient selections. If patient is in a higher risk categories, for exam example, extensive colitis with a severe inflammation, PSC, stricture, or previous history of dysplasia, strong family history of colorectal cancer, I think these are uh, higher risks considered as a higher risks. So if the patient in this kind of category has got dysplasia, we will recommend the patient to have surgery. So again, if we are going to consider endoscopic resections, the bowel has to be in remission or up to mild activities, and preferably only single lesion. So the lesion has to have a clear demarcation border without any suspicious feature. 
So there are a lot of elements we have to consider uh, before thinking about endoscopic resection. So here at St. Mark's, we normally do dedicated IBD surveillance. Uh, and if dysplasia is found, the case was discussed in IBD, MDT, multidisciplinary uh, approach. Then we are going to decide what kind of treatment is the most appropriate for the patient. Now let's move on to the endoscopic resection for IBD dysplasia. What we need is complete resection, ideally on block resection for precise histopathological examination. But IBD dysplasia normally has got fibrosis from ongoing inflammation. And sometimes biopsies from adjacent mucosa uh, need to assess if there is field change or not. So thinking about these factors, endoscopic submucosal dissection would be the best approach because EST can treat submucosal fibrosis and can provide on block samples. And also if we can include the normal margin, we can omit the biopsies from adjacent mucosa. So I want to share the case. So this is the uh, 72 years old lady uh, with quiescent colitis, the two, two centimeter region, I will describe this 1S plus 2A was found. Because of the subtle extension, the marking was placed first and mucosal incision was made. And uh, I'm sure your attention is withdrawn this uh, yellow bit. This is a fat depositions. and the ESD was performed and clear margin was obtained. I want to share another case with video. So uh, this case, the three centimeter lesions in transverse colon in mild colitis. So here I'm trying to check if there's a clear demarcation line and using NBI, assessing the uh, surface pattern, vessel patterns. And after putting the mark marking, the gelo fusion was injected. But we normally don't have very good lifting on this kind of lesions. The region Y is shown uh, in a minute. So mucosal incision was made And then again, these fat tissues was observed. So in my studies, around 40% of the uh, lesion in a UC has got this kind of fat depositions. And fat dep deposition is very difficult to cut. And so we have to go underneath the fat depositions. And I wonder if you can see the, mus the, the shadow of the muscle um, at the, the upper part, upper half. So that's the uh, plane we have to target, dissect. So uh, compared to the normal, uh, not normal, but non colitic lesions, the narrow plane, so therefore less room for error. In this case, pocket creation method was um, selected now try to open the pocket. And again, as you can see, cutting fat is extremely difficult. And also combination of the fat and fibrosis, this kind of vessels were normally hidden. So not good views. So this bleeding was treated using uh, coagulaspa uh, hemostatic forceps. Maybe I'm going to show another uh, bleeding, but um, so this is a towards the end. 
still the submucosal layer visibility is not brilliant. So another bleeding happened. But this can be treated with the tip of the knife this time. So from the summary of recent studies uh, of ESD to uh, colitic uh, dysplasia, submucosal fibrosis are very common findings. Uh, in terms of the adverse event, um, I think fairly safely we can perform ESD. And fat deposition is quite common findings. As you can see, although previous biopsy showed low grade dysplasia, once whole region was treated or excised, uh, there is a sometimes discrepancy. Uh, the advanced uh, lesions is quite common. And of course, we are just treating the local area, not treating whole bowel. Therefore, uh, metacrylonous lesions is also common findings. Some people may think, how about EMR? So this is this study is compared the resection modalities on the uh, colitic uh, dysplasia. And in this case, uh, in this study, EMR applied for small lesions, but on block resection is quite low. And this study concluded EMR should be applied only for uh, lesion. Yes, are treated with endoscopic resection. I think case selection is the key. And technical complexity, th this ESD should be done by expert. Metaconus lesion is common, therefore intensive surveillance colonoscopy is required. Thank you very much for your attention. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Professor Noriko. That was a very elegant uh, presentation. And we know how much you are experienced in this field of uh, endoscopic resection that advanced endoscopy. And uh, maybe we have a few minutes for a couple of questions. And I'll start with the first question. Uh, usually when doing surveillance and we get with our biopsy, the pathology result telling us that there, the patient has an activity. And uh, in the same time, there is areas of dysplasia. Would you usually repeat this endoscopy again? And after what time do you repeat the endoscopy? Yeah, I think that if the bowel is, um, the inflammation is inactive, that is no good time for uh, the surveillance. So if dysplasia detected, I will encourage a physician to control the inflammation then, maybe in three months time, I want to be, be scope, assess the dysplasia. Okay, and uh, is there any indication when you do uh, endoscopic uh, uh, complete wall resection? Uh, complete wall resection. Yes, total resection. Total, uh, total res um, any cases I'm trying to do uh, endoscopic resection, you means. Okay. Uh, is there any questions from the floor? Okay. okay. So we have one question from the floor here. Yeah. Thank you very much. According to the case uh, you presented, uh, you mentioned we have no a good lifting sign and you decided to continue to for ESD. If we have a, a lesion with non-lifting sign, do we proceed or we stop? Uh, no, it looks like a non-lifting sign, but actually because of the fat deposi depositions, the lifting was not presented uh, like the lesions in non colitis. So even with non lifting sign, I, I'll probably do ESD. So we must stop if we have no lifting. It's so okay. actually lifting, but it doesn't present as lifting because of the fat tissues. Yeah, oh, thank you. 
Okay, any other questions from the floor or from colleagues? Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Professor Noriko. Really, that was a very interesting talk, and we would like to see you always with us in our meeting. Thank you so much. <laughs>